Welcome everybody to our monthly virtual training uh, for Head Coach ARPC. In this month's training, we'll be going over the Air Force 475 and the Air Force 77 supplemental sheet uh, for referral. And I want to thank you all so much for your time. And we do ask three things from our audience. If you have a question or comment that is not answered in today's training, feel free to make uh, my previous ticket and your ticket will be answered in three to five business days. Lastly, we ask our audience to stay up to date with our AFI for this training. AFI 36-2406 will be our reference. Moving on to the Air Force 475 itself. This is um, mainly used for officers only, and normally the schoolhouse initiates this type of report. And this type of report is normally used for officer schooling and or pilot training. Now, starting with section one, block one, is where you input the member's name. Block two will be their social security number. Block three will be their rank. Block four will be their duty AFSC. Block five is where you input the organization, command, and location. For this example, we're using the USAF Weapons Score, Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada, ACC. For block six, the period of reports. Here, I'm going to explain the 20 weeks or more rule found in the AFI itself, AFI 36-2406, table 6.2, note one. And I'm going to read what the AFI states. So, evaluation prepared under this rule begins the day following the due date of the student's last OPR or training report unless it is an initial evaluation for initial evaluation. The from date is the date of officer's entry on extended active duty or start of the current AGR lead assignment, or the date of the first federally recognized appointment for AMG students for not extended active duty or for AFR students not on extended active duty. The day of the last assignment to the ready reserve position presently held. The due date is the date the training of or course ends on when the officer is released by the training organization. As for example, a student has an OPR that closed out on the 1st of July 2014 and attends the course beginning on 6th August 2014. The course graduated on 5 August 2015. The, pe the period of evaluation should be 2 July 2014 to 5 August 2015. And to supplement that 20 weeks or more rule, uh, the start date is the day after their last closeout. Uh, this does reset the OPR cycle and it can't overlap with any other report in the record. Now for the 19 weeks or less, if it's 19 weeks or less, it can overlap because it does not reset the OPR cycle. The start date of the 19 weeks or less is the day the course starts. And then for this, this specific example, we are using 1st of Jan 2018 through 16 June 2018. Now moving on to section one, block seven, the length of the course. Uh, the, this length of the course is the total number of weeks the member was at the course, not the duration. Again, this is the total number of weeks the member was at the course. And this member was 23 weeks. Moving on to section one, block eight, the reason for reports. Now, normally it's going to be final, and I'm going to reference the AFI again for this section, and I'm going to read the definition for annual, final, and directed, starting with final. And that if I'm referencing is AFI 36-2406, uh, table 6.1, note four. Now, for the final, if it's final, definition for that in the AFI is on completion of interruption by official orders of or elimination for any reason from scheduled course slash training program or when released by the training organization. If it's an annual report at the end of each academic year, except for the final year for officers in extended programs, when the graduation date is within four calendar months of the annual evaluation, submit a final TR 
or training report in place of the annual training report. And if it's directed, when directed by half or an appropriate commander for extended active duty officers or AFR officers not on extended active duty, or NGB for A and G officers not on extended active duty, evaluations will reflect directed. Now moving on to section one block nine. Uh, here you input the name and location of the school or institution. For this example, we are using USAF Weapons School at Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada. Block 10, here you input the name or title of the course. For this example, we are using the USAF Weapons Instructor course for the KC-135 WIC, which stands for Weapons Instructor course. Now for section two, block one, here you input the AFSC slash arrow rating or degree awarded. Here uh, the member received a W in front of their duty AFSC for the KC-135 weapons instructor course. Section two, block two. Here uh, you input if the member did not complete the course, you will select this box here. And then in section two, block four, you will list the reason why they did not complete the course. And there's a list of examples as well as specific examples on why the member did not complete the course found in AFI 36-2406, table 6.2, note 6. There will be listed a bunch of examples on why, and you'll input it in uh, section 2, block 4. Now for section 2, block 3, distinguished graduate. If there was a distinguished graduate program and the member earned a distinguished grad, you would input yes here. If uh, there was no distinguished graduate program, you select the other box that says no distinguished graduate program. Now, if uh, the school has a distinguished graduate program, but the member did not earn one, you will leave section three blank. Oh, section two, block three blank. Section two, block four, here you will input the distinguished grad award criteria slash, or if the member did not complete the course, uh, you list uh, the course non completion reason here. Now, moving on to section three, here is, is an example of what uh, training report bullets would look like. Uh, some of the comments they can't mention are developmental education and no promotion statements are allowed. Everything else is up to the schoolhouse and what they wanted to include. For section four, here you um, here is where the evaluator, commandant, student flight commander, or any other org structure that the school has they will sign and date here. And we do urge members who complete the course to receive a copy of their final Air Force 475 report to take home, to take back home to their home base, to give to their CSS to upload into VPC so they can get properly stored into the record. Even though the schoolhouse does the same thing, we advise members to go ahead and just give it to their CSS. It's better to have two routing in the system than none at all. If the uh, Air Force was 75 wasn't completed when the student completed the course. We urge the student to please stay in contact with the schoolhouse until it's completed so they can receive a copy to give to their CSS. That concludes this portion of the Air Force 475 report. And I'm going to go ahead and go over to the Air Force 77 supplemental sheet for referral in case the member um, did not complete the course and receive a director comment on this report. Now for the Air Force 77 sheet, uh, this will include the referral memorandum, and you can get the referral memorandum template from the Air um, from the AFI itself, AFI 36-246, Figure 1.1, and then the same process applies for the MFR, and more details can be found with our YouTube video that uh, explains how the referral process is. So I'm just going to briefly go over the MFR itself. So the first paragraph is where you state the uh, director comment that was provided on the Air Force 475. The paragraph two is normally addressed to the next evaluator, and that's normally the that's normally the uh, commander of the school or the unit of assignment that uh, fills out the supplemental sheet. Uh, paragraph three stays the same, and then on the second page, the indent uh, indentment is where the radius acknowledgement box goes. And uh, that will start that three day, uh, three duty day for 
AGR and 30 calendar days for uh, non-EAD time period from when the next evaluator can sign here on the Air Force 77 itself. And I'll go more in detail to when we reach section five. So starting off with section one, block one, you input the member's name, followed by block two, the social, block three, the rank, block four, the duty FSC, block five, their duty title or title of additional duty. Block six is uh, for deployed location or name of operation, if applicable. Section two, block A type of report will be a supplemental sheet. Section two, block B1 is the period of report. This period of report should be matching with what the Air Force 475 is. For this example, we are using uh, the 1st of Jan 2018 through 16 June 2018. And if I switch back to, the, to my Air Force 475, Example, the date should be matching. Yes. Go back to the Air Force 77, Section 2, Block B2. This report is considered mandatory. Um, section 2, Block B3, 4, 5, and Section 3 is for deployed commanders only. So we'll leave this blank because it's not applicable. Now for Section 4, um, I'm going to read what it says. So, in accordance with AFI 36-246, paragraph 1.10.6.4, the referral training report, Air Force 475, referred the training report to the READY using the same procedures outlined in paragraph 1.10.6.1 and 1.10.6.2. Name the commander of the Air Force for school or unit of assignment as the next evaluator determined by which organization is preparing the training report. The evaluator reviews the radius comments if provided as the applicable mandatory comments in accordance with paragraph 1.10.5.3.2.2.1 or paragraph 1.10.5.3.2.2.2 and endorses the training report on an Air Force Forum 77 using the first evaluator's block. This block must reflect one of the following statements, which whichever is applicable. So if the uh, ready ha has provided a rebuttal comment, the mandatory comment must be stated. I have carefully considered, and put ready's name, comments to the referral document of the through date reflected in section two A or if the ready did not provide a rebuttal comment, um, you will input this mandatory statement. Comments from the ready were requested, but were not received within the required period. Now, um, for section five, here you input the, the next evaluator, which they do have to wait that three duty days for AGR, 30 calendar days for IED from when the ready sign and acknowledge the referral memorandum. And I just wanted to clarify again that the first evaluator will be filling out the Air Force 475 itself with the directory comments and the referral memorandum while the next evaluator uh, fills the supplemental sheet out. And when submitting this um, Air Force Form 475 with the supplemental sheet, um, it has to be in one continuous document, first starting with the Air Force 475 itself, followed by the MFR, and then the supplemental sheet. And uh, that concludes this portion of this training. Um, yes, sir, this is Senior M. McDermott from 147 CBCF. Um, so the Air Force Form 475, the Education Training Report, um, that also applies for the Guard, correct? Or only active duty? That is correct. It applies for uh, the Guard as well. Okay. When we went to tech school, is it man mandatory for us to obtain it from our schoolhouse? Because we didn't get issued this when we graduate tech school. It, so the... Um... The 475 is only for officers attending education or training. The 475 is not used for enlisted at all. 
So enlisted do not get a 475 for any sort of schooling or CDCs or anything like that. Copy that. Thank you, sir. So thank you for your time. Don't forget, if, you, if any questions won't answer today, please open the MyPreach ticket with questions in lieu of emailing technicians directly. MyPreach tickets are answered in three to five business days. Please review any updates to the AFI 36-2406. And that concludes today's virtual training. All right. I want to thank you all, you all for coming again, and I hope you all have a nice evening. Uh, please look forward to our next month's training on ERABS. Thank you.